Welcome back. So this is after the uh, post cure is finished. We've dismantled the oven, and um, somebody asked what the post cure is for. It's like basically baking a cake, really. But what ends up happening is the um, carbon molecules get cross-linked, and it makes the whole thing stronger and actually more sort of rigid. Uh, anyway, so you, here you can see Jeremy's um, starting to put some of the stuff back together um, for everything. Anyway, everything went well except we had a little bit of a problem uh, with the door windows. The frames that I put those windows in, if you've seen a while back. Ago, they were actually really too much of a snug fit for those um, windows, and the expansion on the acrylic was more than the carbon fiber, which is hardly anything. And ultimately, the windows popped out, and you can actually just see at the top there the windows just sticking out a little bit. And so, um, I'll explain a little bit more how we're going to fix this. And ultimately, we're going to have to sort of fasten these windows in for the prototype. And uh, looking at the other one here, you can see uh, it's a little bit difficult to see on this side, but anyway. It basically popped out so the, the high sole lost um, its uh, grip on it because the window just didn't have anywhere to go but out. Um, anyway, so you're going to see a solution to that coming up. It's not the end of the world and, and we already have redesigns for the doors anyway, or at least ideas on what we're going to do um, for production. So but we should still be able to get this one working and the pressurization still working on there. And meanwhile, um, got all set up here to get the EG set. EGT sensor there into the Y pipe, so to remove the, one of the turbos out of the way, so Britt could get in there and uh, do his magic on that. And that's what it looked like after he'd put the weld bung on there. So we're all set up now to have uh, proper EGT readings coming straight out the uh, exhaust manifolds here. And there's the sensor there that's going to go in the bung. And meanwhile, Jim's finishing up his last couple of days with us there by getting this all welded up. So this is that framework that's going to support the um, wing spar mold while it gets laid up. And here's the fuselage now moved onto the other side of the shop again and got back on the landing gear. And next thing I wanted to do on the doors was bond in those new brass bushings, or bronze bushings I should say. So I'm just um, going to be mixing up some resin with flux in there to get those bonded in and I sort of knurled them so they won't lose grip and this is what it looks like uh, after the fact. It still needs to be sanded off a little bit and then ultimately once we've um, fastened that uh, window in correctly we'll be putting that uh, upper door skin on. And then I got onto the other side and uh, got that one sorted out and just got bits and bits of cardboard there to keep the um, mixture nice and flat while it's in there so it doesn't want to sort of run out of there. It worked out nicely and so those are bonded in nice and strong now and that's what that one looks like with the cardboard removed. Yeah, meanwhile here's Jeff uh, just boxing in the center section of the uh, main spar for the foreplane just with some foam there and it's going to get a layup over the top of that and that's just going to increase the strength in the in the middle section of that spar. And here's a, how it looks um, after getting a coat of resin and I'm probably guessing Cabo, maybe Flox, uh, maybe Micro, I think Micro over the top of that. And uh, Jeremy and Keith in the process here of installing um, the rear uh, inertia reel seat belts there. Now that you know we've got the post cure done, we can start really putting everything back together. In fact, my next goal really is to just get everything uh, closed out in the fuselage here so we can actually um, get it pressurized and test it. So that means you know getting the doors sorted out and closing up all the other holes and putting those back doors on the on the pressure bulkhead and and putting the seals around the doors, which actually have the seals already. I haven't test fit them yet. And there's another thing that got sealed um, that was yesterday, Friday. Uh, that's the aileron box um, got bolted in there and sealed. And the last thing I had to do, uh, well actually I was working on yesterday was cutting a couple more. Um, blanks for these two extra ribs that Mark wanted right in the foreplane right where they um, where the foreplane meets up to the fuselage and this is what they look like after the guys had sanded them and um, put the sort of uh, resin coat on there so they're ready for another sanding and primer and here's our little AC unit that we picked up um, just I think it was 12,000 BTU or something and uh, Jim put together a stand for that and got some little casters from um, Harbour Freight and he got the frame, Jim got the frame all done so here the guys just positioning this one and so we got two of these frame, one one for the left and one for the right but that main section is just kind of reusable you can flip it either way and then you just bolt on the other section so and as you can see our other um, jigs leaning up against the wall over there 
so we've got that out of the way now and this is what um, that looks like with the mold in there and we've now turned our oven into a cool room with the air conditioning unit so uh, Jeff will be able to lay up that part and not worry about the resin going off too quickly and that this uh, unit there should be able to keep that in the low 60s or mid 60s even when it's sort of 90 degrees in the shop so that's uh, good to have that sorted out for next week and now that I got the EGT sensor in there where it really needed to be um, it's time yet yesterday afternoon Friday uh, to get another run on the engine and uh, get some real numbers for EGT and the other thing I've done is I've got this uh, spal fan here and a little pusher fan and uh, got that on the uh, intercooler actually taped up the sides of that after this video and uh, just to get some more cold air flying through the intercooler so here's the engine just warming up right now and uh, so a couple the couple of changes are I got the EGTs now so I basically swapped over the sensor so instead of having one temperature coming out of um, turbo one and the other temperature coming out of turbo two I've basically got one temperature it coming out of the exhaust so right before turbo one and the second temperature reading coming out of turbo one so I don't really care about the temperature coming out of turbo two anymore and there's nothing you know you can do about that um, it's going to be colder than what it is going in that's all we really need to know and here's a bit of a view of the shop from uh, up on one of the legs of the CNC machine so you see you've got the fuselage sitting there back up on the blocks and uh, the new cool room and there's the engine uh, just sitting there idling and warming up so uh, I'll let you watch um, that run that I did on there, the full power run and um, once that's over I'll go over the numbers with you and so you can see uh, how it performed this time. So here's the results of that run and the first thing you'll notice is uh, on the right hand side I've overlaid in the red box there the run uh, numbers from the previous run um, where the RPM was pretty much the same and uh, as you can see down the bottom uh, I've got the same um, fuel mass there 100 uh, milligram I think it's milligram and then 100 on the other run but I've adjusted the throttle now so 80% throttle um, gets 100 whereas before it was 95% so I'm actually going to be adding a little bit more fuel 
uh, on the next run a little bit more than 100. And one thing you'll notice here is the temperature is basically the coolant and the oil temps are pretty much the same because I didn't have the uh, the water to water uh, cooler working there. And so on the previous run, it was a lot cooler on the water than it was on the oil. So that may have made a difference in terms of the overall engine cooling, but it wasn't running for very long, so it shouldn't make that much of a difference. Uh, what you can see here, though, is the intercooler temperature 241 uh, compared to 278. So actually picked up quite a bit of cooling with that uh, cooling fan there pushing air through the intercooler and the boost levels because of that dropped down a little bit lower so 44 to 45 and even the first um, turbo 20.6 to 22 so actually doing kind of what I hoped cooler temperatures lower boost um, and then here's the EGT so 1540 that's the actual EGT and then 1158 is what's coming out of turbo number one whereas the previous one there 1391 was what's coming out of turbo one and 900 was what was coming out of turbo 2 so you got to compare that 1390 to the 1158 to actually you know be comparing the things that are the same um, so we actually got cooler temperatures coming out of the the turbo now the first turbo which is good and the fuel flows there 17.3 16.6 so we're actually using more fuel which is better meaning that we're actually producing more horsepower for the same uh, rpm there so as I was hoping, by lowering the uh, intake air temperatures, um, by having an extra air running through that intercooler, we've managed to lower the, the um, EGT temperatures as well. Now I didn't know exactly what the EGT was before, but I can see the temperature coming out of turbo uh, one there has gone down you know, from 1390 to 1158. Um, so that's a good thing. And uh, subsequently the boost and the fuel is matching better. What's interesting to note, that highest value right there we were um, something like 1700 on the EGTs, over 1700 EGT, um, which is kind of high and I uh, don't really want to go there for very long. So I'm still sort of just being careful when I run it up to the high power settings. But uh, again, with the fuel flow being more, um, that, that sort of turns into better horsepower, as you'll see in a minute there. And we'll see how we go when we get a little bit more fuel mass uh, on the next run that I do. Okay, so if we now put those numbers into this good old spreadsheet, um, you'll see you've got the RPM in there and then the boost values and the lower temperatures because of the new fan on the intercooler there, at 240 as you see, and I estimate the other one at 340 because that sensor only goes up to 300 degrees. You'll notice that we're seeing uh, 367 horsepower now, which is kind of nice. And the fuel flow is actually pretty close to matching there. Um, it says there are 16.9 gallons an hour, actually 17.3 is what I put in here and if you do that math with the 6.8 pounds per gallon and the 0.326 for the specific fuel consumption you end up with 360. So the numbers are really starting to gel around about 360 there, which is nice. So anyway, it's still just estimates and stuff, but uh, it's pretty good for a static power there, uh, just sitting on the stand. Anyway, so next week we'll be on to um, more work on uh, trying to pressurize the cab and get everything sealed up. And uh, Jeff will be in the process of uh, laying up um, or getting ready to lay up the first of the wing spars. So, and it'll just be the three of us in the shop. So anyway, that's our update for this week. And thanks again for watching.